Because I'm going to call that one Plea to the Red. I know, I know. I'm going to call that one Plea to the Redskins. Okay. All right. So, the draft. My opinion of the draft is outside of Chase Young and Antonio Gibson. And you know what? I wasn't even going to make a video on post draft because honestly, I really didn't like it. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that Chase Young was a wrong pick at number two overall because I'm not in the building. I don't study film. I don't 24 seven. I don't, I don't immerse myself in this stuff. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Ron Rivera that he and Jack Del Rio that when they took Chase Young, they know what they're doing or they, they know what they're doing better than I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. But I will say this, that I don't, when it comes to these high picks, um, I believe the proof is in what you see. And I'll say this, that you don't know how these young kids are going to handle having money. It can completely change their work ethic, their attitude, and their desire to play. And because they get money, they start developing parts of their lives that they wouldn't otherwise had a chance to. And it's no, I'm not saying Chase Young has good or bad character. I don't know the guy. But when you have the opportunity, and, and thank God for it, that this young man has the chance now to buy things he couldn't otherwise buy. Get a nice house for his mom and dad. That's awesome, wonderful. These things can be a distraction. And until you know for sure how the guy's going to handle it, is he going to lose focus on his job? I don't know what to think. Boom or bust, who knows? What I do know is, is that he got suspended for three or four games for violating an NCAA rule or two. I don't know all the ins and outs. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to call judgment down on it. But I do believe that if I made this pick, I probably would have taken Andrew Thomas, the offensive tackle from Georgia. It's just a safer pick in my mind. You have no left tackle. I mean, whoever the Redskins quarterback is going to be this year is going to get killed. So I think taking a left tackle would have been a better decision at number two overall. Chase Young or no Chase Young. The pick they should have made at number two overall should have been left tackle. Okay. Um, the other argument is how many, how many number one picks do you need on the defensive line? Well, that's, again, that is, I think, I would like to say too many, but at the same time, I think that you have to just give the coaches the benefit of the doubt. I'll say something else that several years ago, the Redskins had the number two and three overall pick in the first round of the draft. They took LeVar Arrington and Chris Samuels. Chris Samuels, I think, turned out to be a pretty good left tackle for quite a few years for the Redskins. But if anybody is going to try to sit here and tell me that LeVar Arrington lived up to being the number two overall pick in the draft, I would say that you are Believing in illusions. LeVar Arrington was the most overrated player coming out of college. He had subpar speed. He was, first and foremost, taken by the Redskins because he was going to be marketed by Daniel Snyder. And he was a total disappointment. For being the number two overall pick in the draft, somebody, everybody was saying, was the next Lawrence Taylor. LeVar Arrington was an embarrassment. Oh, no, that's, that's too strong. He was, he was okay. But he could have gone in the second round. Or the third round. Why? Because he came out of college, all fired up, ready to go, said, I'm more than ready for the next level. And I think he actually had pretty good character. I think that there were no issues in college. He was a good teammate. 
What happened to LeVar Arrington was the fact that there were bigger offensive linemen in the NFL that he couldn't leap over anymore. His athleticism did not translate to the NFL because of the size of the people on offense and the speed of the receivers. And when it really turned into work for him, he had to work harder than he ever had. And all of a sudden, he's got all this money. And yeah, he lost his focus. And I think he was an average receiver. I'm an average linebacker. And I'm afraid that, that may very well happen with Chase Young. I hope not. I hope Chase Young is the next Julius Peppers. I really do. I hear his father is a cop. I hear he has a great attitude, great work ethic, great teammate. And outside of a uh, some kind of violation that he had with uh, his NCAA eligibility, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Don't remember it. But I wouldn't say that that isn't the kind of mistake that somebody else would have made. I, I think that I think that the mistake that he made that he got suspended for does not necessarily mean that he has poor character. But he did break a rule. So um, I don't know. Um, I hope the best for the kid. I hope he turns out to be great. And I hope that he turns out to be great and gets the Redskins to the Super Bowl and they win it because he gets the last sack of the game and seals the deal. So I hope the best for Chase Young. But right now I'm believe it when I see it mode. I've just seen it one too many times. Guys like this come out of college and turn out to be duds. So any case, as far as the rest of the Redskins draft is concerned, I think that... Um, taking Antonio Gibson in the third round was a good pick because they had to replace Chris Thompson. I mean, Scott Turner's offense, uh, the option hybrid running slot, uh, option receiver back is big, huge, and that's what Antonio Gibson did at Memphis. So that pick makes sense. After that, I can't get my brain around the rest of this draft, and I wasn't even going to do this video until I saw everybody else on the internet agreeing with me. Nobody outside of Chase Young and Antonio Gibson likes this draft. It feels like that Ron Rivera, Kyle Smith, their philosophy is, you know, it's a new coach. Without a doubt, they didn't even get a left tackle anywhere in the draft. That this team, the leadership believes taking the best player available, even if it's a couple percentage points, because I'm telling you this, I would not have taken anybody past Antonio Gibson. I would go back and do this draft all over again. How many linebackers do you need? How many defensive linemen do you need? They didn't take a tight end. They didn't take a left tackle. They took a, another center. They've got 30 guards on the roster. They took another guard. They signed guards. They've got 30 guards. So it's clear to me the reason why they drafted the way that they did is because they take the best player available even if it's nothing to do with position that they need badly. I don't think, what is his name, Logan, was it Logan Ryan? And the guy that took from Green Bay, Richard Rodgers, neither one of those guys is going to do anything. They're going to go into the season with nobody at tight end and nobody at left tackle. And they're going to go, everybody's predicting this. The way that they have not addressed their two most significant needs on offense speaks to the fact that they're going to be another 2-12, and 13 year. And considering the corona, the limitations from that, my best guess is, is that Kyle Allen starts the year because not only will he be better prepared than Dwayne Haskins, who can't prepare at all, but... You don't want Dwayne Haskins to get killed by an offensive line that's horrible and three tight ends who aren't going to do that much. So the Redskins, they're already saying number one or two pick in the draft next year. I'm not even going to mention the names of these guys that they draft. I don't, I don't remember them. When I saw these guys, I was like, what are you kidding me? I, I do like the quarterback that they brought in from Oregon, uh, Steven Montez. Maybe if Ron Rivera is really interested in running this organization right, rather than putting uh, Dwayne Haskins out there because he's a first-round pick, put the guy in there who is doing the best job. 
Initially, that'll be Kyle Allen when training camp starts. Put Kyle Allen with the first team and let Dwayne Haskins and uh, Steven Montez start out even ground, second string, taking sharing reps with the second team offense to see which one of them at their house studies the most film and puts the most effort into it. And honestly, Steven Montez and Dwayne Haskins can both hire themselves a quarterback coach and be working with a position coach while all this is going on. And it'll be obvious who does it. And whoever is better prepared, starting out, co-second string, let that person be the backup quarterback. And you know what? My money's on Steven Montez. But if Dan Snyder is really not running the show anymore, then Ron Rivera, I, I believe Steven Montez will work harder, will work, will, will, will put in more work than Dwayne Haskins. Because Dwayne Haskins has all that money. That's why. He's rich. He's a millionaire now. Steven Montez, undrafted contract. He's got what? $100,000 in the bank, maybe fifty. dollars He's going to outwork Dwayne Haskins. I'm telling you that right now. And if they go into the season with Montez as a backup quarterback and Dwayne Haskins as a third string until probably about week eight, Haskins starts catching on. What well, week eight, I would expect it to be a battle between Montez and Haskins to beat out Kyle Allen to be the starting quarterback. And then um, next year's draft, pick one, pick one or two, which is what people are projecting. If I have the number one pick in the draft, I'm taking Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. And then let Trevor Lawrence, Steven Montez, and Dwayne Haskins battle it out. And if the Redskins have the number two pick in the draft, I'm taking the, uh, what's his name? Peni Fuel. Peni Fuel, uh, who is the left tackle for the University of Oregon right now. He's supposed to be the number one offensive lineman in the country this year and is projected to go number one or number two overall in the draft and that's my two cents